Gary, I sense from you such like an open abundance mindset. Did you always think like this? Did you always feel like things were unlimited? That there was no, there was no, a lot of us just think in terms of a box, myself included. It's, and I, I don't see that from you. I see that the, you see endless possibilities and there's never a black and white answer. There's a lot of gray. My world is entirely gray. There's no black and white. Um, and it is a about endless possibility. It's, it's what you make of it. I came to Hollywood wide-eyed, rose-colored glasses. And by the way, I'm still wearing rose-colored glasses. I will be the eternal optimist till the day I, I leave this life because it's a better choice for me. But when someone says no to the thing about moving to, to LA to try and get into the film business is that I spent years getting no, a lot of no's, hundreds of thousands of no's. In a very rare instance, I might get a yes. But the no's so outweighed it. You know, it's interesting. There was a book um, by Jeff Olson called the, the Slight Edge. And in that book, he talks about social science studies have proven that a child by the age of five has heard the word no 40,000 times. And he's heard that same child has heard the word yes by uh, 8,000 8, times. 40,000 no's, 8,000 yeses. Five times the gravity holding that child down as the buoyant yes, uplifting that child's mindset and, and sense of possibility. That's a formative time. So they enter the first grade with, with that energy. Quite a deficit there. Imagine the possibility if that were reversed. How would that kid enter into, so into, 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 into his social, new social environments. But be that as it may, I see the world as endless possibility. When someone says no to me, I've heard it so many times that I've gone deaf. I am literally deaf to the word. So to me, when you say no to me, I'm smiling and I'm excited. Why? Because it's the same as a yes. I choose it to be the same as a yes. Why? I know that no is not yes. But what I do know is that the greater currency, whatever you were going to say yes to, it would have been nice. It would have made me happy. But the real win is my relationship to you, with you. So if I can take that no and honor you by saying, fantastic. First of all, I've taken all the, you know, people don't like to say no. It makes them feel terrible and they feel guilty and this and that. But if I take that away right off the table by going, oh my God, great, and surprise them, well, new, new rules, right? So I can say to them, that's fabulous. You know, it would, you have no idea the value that you would bring to my life, that you would honor me if you would be my, my 3.7 minute mentor right now, my five minute mentor. If you could share with me why this is a no to you, I would be eternally grateful. Now you've, you've opened the door to them telling you the truth. They're not going to say no. You've flattered them. You've honored them. You've made them smile, hopefully made them laugh. And you're being honest. And they know that. We know when someone's being honest with us. And now out comes the thing called empathy. And that thing called caring. So they'll tell you. And A, you will learn something important. And B, that ineffable thing happens we as two people have just bonded in an entirely higher context. I've left the room with a no and a friend, a no and a closer relationship and a new mentor. You do that a hundred times over the course of a couple of years, success is inevitable because people who care about you who are more successful will ensure that. That's the way, that's the way it works. Have you had a no then come back a year, two, three, whatever later and say, you know what, Gary, remember we talked? I was just wondering, this, this is different from when we last, you know, and, and it kept the relationship or it kept the meeting in a good standing. There was no negativity, kept it upbeat. And then they came back to you and it turned out there was something else that they thought of you for. How you approach people determines how they feel about you, not just in the moment, but ongoing. I've ha I have had a lot of people over time come back with opportunity in a different form, a different time, a different place, a different topic, a different project, if you will, um, and invite me into a conversation that 
was largely the result of earlier interactions. And those interactions left them with a positive feeling. I didn't make them feel bad, I, I quite the opposite. And um, uh, you know, that's, that, that's what success looks like to me. Success to me looks like a, a string of pearls, human relationships that were dealt with well in the moment. Because now people are talking about me behind my back, but in a good way, or thinking about me, perhaps in a better way. Um, and, and, and then remembering me because of it. And, and I think we all do that. We, we, um, we, like, we like to do business with people that we like, that we respect, that we trust, that we know how they're going to behave. If I deliver bad news to you and you come back in a positive way to me, I know that you're the writer I want in a writer room at 3 a.m. in the morning when things are really tough and getting ugly, and I can count on you to still be a human being. That does matter. You will always get hired over the slightly more talented writer if I don't trust that to be true about them, but I do trust that to be true about you. That's how we're wired.